Um, our theme, as you know, is alien investigation, and I'm going to talk about something that some of you may have experienced as alien and possibly hostile, and that's California's Employment Development Division. <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about, you may be one of the tens of millions of people who got laid off during the pandemic, and if you applied for unemployment insurance, you might have had some trouble getting it. If you didn't have the joy of this experience, what might have felt alien? Uh, well, you might have gotten a letter like this that said your benefits would be zero dollars, uh, and you thought, maybe I'm not eligible. Well, that's not what this meant. It meant we had to check your unemployment, uh, your, your employment verification, and nowhere on the letter did it say that, and there were many confusing uh, messages like this. So I got to sort of step into this seemingly alien landscape when I was asked to co-chair a strike team to clear what was becoming a very large backlog of unprocessed claims. Uh, people thought they knew what the rot was wrong, and it was COBOL, uh, a language written in 1959. And yes, there is COBOL in our unemployment insurance systems and many other systems, but was that really what was wrong? Uh, one of the things that, uh, another thing that was wrong was that when you applied, EDD had no idea who you were when you started the process. So we used to go into offices and show our ID. When this moved online, what we did instead is look at your name, date of birth, and social security number, and match them against other databases. If they matched perfectly, EDD assumed you were legit. And there, if you then your employer information also matched, you got a benefit automatically. 20 million people got paid this way in the first year alone of the pandemic, in California alone. So this was all the COBOL. The COBOL was doing actually very well. But if it didn't match, if that data didn't match, you were not getting paid automatically at all. There were very experienced claims processors who were guiding your claim manually through a process so complex, I can only <laughs> explain it this way. My colleague was working with these processors day after day, and one of these guys kept saying, ah, I'm not really sure, I'm the new guy. And she finally said, how long have you worked here? And he said, I've only worked here 17 years. The guys who really know this stuff have been here for 25 years or more. So that stuff isn't the COBOL code, it's law and policy and regulation. Uh, one state labor commissioner claims there were 7,000 pages of UI regulations that governed his state. The truth is we don't really know. There isn't a binder of regulation. There's a steady stream of rules that reference other rules back to 1939 that cross the executive, legislative, and judicial branches of state and federal government, and every state is different. So if a new state came into the union tomorrow and said, tell us you know, what these regulations are, the Federal Department of Labor literally couldn't tell them. It's that complex. That's why someone who's been doing this for 17 years says they're still the new guy. <laughs> so <laughs> why did California have a, 20, uh, have a giant backlog of unprocessed claims? Well, in part because we hired 5,000 people to help process the claims. But the claims that couldn't be processed automatically could only be processed by the guys with 25 years of experience. So these 5,000 people are there for a week or a month. They still can do approximately nothing. The experienced claims processors, on the other hand, are not processing claims. They're training the 5,000 people. So that's not the only reason that we, didn't, we had this backlog. There are more reasons, but they're in my book, and you'll have to buy it. Uh, it comes out June 13th, and it's called Recoding America. Um, I wrote this book because I spent a decade really focused on how badly we make government technology. And what I didn't focus on enough is what we ask that technology to do. And it's really critical. I mean, you can't wait nine months. You need that benefit now. People's livelihoods are at stake. But it's also democracy. When people have bad experiences with programs like unemployment insurance, they vote at lower rates. We cannot afford this. And that's why these landscapes at the EDD and agencies like them can't be alien. 
many more of us are going to have to step into these landscapes and really work to make them more familiar and certainly more friendly. Thank you.